So with the engine battery still up, we're going to move to this. Your battery boost. Okay? Everybody's got a switch on your driver's side console. It says battery boost on. Exactly what it does. It connects the chassis batteries to the house batteries. So when we get back into that storage facility and, and we've lost house power, we can start the engine, hold down the battery boost switch, and it will start charging the house batteries off of the engine. Okay, once we get a little bit of surface charge in there, then we can start the generator and the generator will take over and continue to charge the batteries. Okay, make sense? So you just have to press that battery boost Push it and hold it. Hold it. Yep, push it and hold it. Okay. And you've, once you push it and hold it, you, you got to keep holding it. You know, sure. if you don't want to sit there the whole time and hold it, you can put something underneath the back side of the switch. It's, right. The older switches take four pennies, the newer switches take five pennies. Okay. We All think right. they started making money a little bit thinner. <laughs> so stack something underneath there, put something underneath the switch, hold it in place, give it ten, right around ten minutes or so to charge, and then start your generator. Okay. Okay? And that will give you enough surface charge to get the generator going and start charging the coach with the inverters. Okay? I, I, I'm lost there. I, I had to do something. Oh, that's right. So this is our battery boost. Right. For the start the engine, which I have. Or start the generator. Okay. Because the generator is on the house batteries. Or if the engine batteries are dead, so you do that. it's oh. going to connect. Yeah, you want to turn it on, you know, push it down and leave the... Leave Five it, pennies. Leave it turned on. Five okay. pennies or four pennies. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> but what it's doing is it's connecting the two banks of batteries together. Okay. Yes. I did what you said earlier. I let the batteries run down and the keys was inside and I couldn't open it with the remote and I called you guys mm -hmm. and um, you gave me, uh, or not you, but someone told me to take a 110 wire and plug it into one of my receptacles and back feed and I put enough charge in the batteries to open the door. It, one of the receptacle boxes in the basement? Mm -hmm. I, plugged a 110 into that. I, I had put two males yeah, yep. together and I, so I run the power back through it and it let me open the door. Right. Yeah. If you can get the basement doors open. Yeah, if you Because these fires don't have electric locks on No, them. they don't. Yeah. Right. You can do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Crazy how that works, right? Yeah. I would just never have thought of that. If it's on an inverted circuit, if you're plugging into an inverted circuit, it's powering the inverter. Yeah. Which in turn charge. Yep. <laughs> never would have thought of that I'll either. I don't remember <laughs> that either. <but> <laughs> you gotta That's take, what electrical you gotta engineers put, do. You've got to take the female end off and put a male in. You mm have -hmm. two male ends, which you're going to plug in hot, and then you're going to plug, 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 in, into the you coach, yeah. plug it into the coat. Yeah, you need both male ends. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it will do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so. We talked about the switch, right, in the council. That's to manually turn on the solenoid. But the solenoid was actually designed and, and made to operate automatically. Okay, we want it to automatically charge when it needs to. So it's all voltage based. And right here is when it talks about with the key on, it, it's gonna be all voltage based. So while we're driving, and you guys, you know, you probably limit yourself to what you're using while you're driving. I'm just guessing. No, I'm joking, you don't. <laughs> we don't really use anything. You guys leave the inverters on while you're driving? Yeah. So your refrigerator stays on. Yeah. Um, you, can, you, you might get up and, you know, one of you might get up and use the restroom while you're driving. Don't yeah. do that. Don't get up from the steering wheel. Yeah. Use I the restroom, that, okay? I thought they were auto drive. <laughs> don't do, do not do that, okay? All right. But throughout the course of the day while you're driving, let's just say you drive for eight hours, throughout the course of the day, you're going to be using battery voltage. Yes. The refrigerator's on, you know, like I said, you might use the restroom. You might have some kids with you. And they might be laying back on the bed watching a movie because we know the TVs work with the inverter. You might have your front TV on yes. with the navigation up there. Yes. Okay. Usually, so, says, usually says absorb charging by the time I get where I'm going to plug in. Yeah, because what's going to happen is this right here is going to monitor. So if we don't have the generator on, 
and we're driving, the engine batteries will keep the house batteries charged up. We don't have to have the generator on while we're driving to keep those batteries charged up. Huh. It will do it with the alternator. All right. This solenoid is automatic, and what it's looking for is voltage. It's all voltage-based. So it has to see a drop below 12.6 on the house batteries and maintain 13.2 volts on the chassis batteries. So as long as we're driving, we know we have more than 13.2 volts on the chassis. Now all we're waiting for is the house batteries to drop below 12.6. So refrigerator compressor comes on, you've got a TV on, you can go back and use the restroom, maybe turn on the microwave, I'm just, you know, some of the things that you could do while you're driving. You got your cell phones plugged in, your computers plugged in, all those things are drawing power. And once it reaches 12.6 volts, the solenoid will engage and start charging the house batteries from the chassis. Now it's only going to stay engaged for an hour. Okay, so here's the question we get on the phone all the time. I've been driving all day, we drove eight hours today, got to my campground, I went to plug in and my battery voltage was less than 12.6 and as soon as I plugged in it went to bolt charging. Which we all know bolt charging is really hard, your batteries must have been low, really hard charge. The question everybody asks is, I thought it was supposed to charge the house batteries from the engine. Okay? You used more than a good charge. Legitimate question. Okay? Here's how it works. That charger is only connected for an hour. Okay, so let's drive eight hours. We get up in the morning, we leave, we're going to drive eight hours, and we're looking for these voltage. We're looking for that voltage in the coach. So we're on the road, and let's say it takes two hours to get to 12.6. Okay, so here's our two hours that we're driving. It gets to 12.6, the solenoid engages for an hour. Three hours. It takes another two hours to get to 12.6. So we're at five hours of the trip. It's going to charge for an hour. It takes another two hours to get to 12.6 again. And how many hours were we driving today? Eight. eight. So I'm at eight hours. We know the battery voltage is 12.6, and it needs a charge. As soon as I plug in, you're going to see that low battery. You're going to see the bolt charge. That is 100% completely normal. Okay, because this only charges for an hour at a time, we know we're going to have that cycle. And, and PJ, I've seen people in the forum say that they develop a routine an hour before they're going to arrive at their cap site, they cut the generator for that last hour of driving. Mm -hmm. Is that good for the batteries to do it that way, or does it make any difference at all? It's not. It, it's going to give it a. It's going to go into bolt charge right then when you first turn the generator on. It's going to start charging, but what they they're, they're not realizing that this is already in place. This is already doing that for them. Okay. Okay. So when you get to where you're going and you plug in. There's nothing to worry about because we've maintained those batteries the whole time we've been driving. Okay. All right. Okay. It's just not a constant charge. We've maintained. We just haven't been putting a constant charge in. Okay. So this will actually work in reverse when you're parked. You guys, you guys stay in one spot for three months. Not yet. Not yet. But, <laughs> well, we will. but you will, right? So here's how that works. Now all we do is swap the voltage. When we're sitting still, I'm looking for 12.6 on the chassis batteries and 13 volts on the house batteries. So if the inverters are charging our batteries all the time, we're staying up into the 13 volts. Let's just say your engine batteries start to drop off a little bit and they get below 12.6. Guess what? That solenoid is going to connect and charge the chassis batteries. Now charge the engine batteries back up to their normal state. So the, the right inverter panel must be the chassis batteries. Nope. No? Because it says full charge on that most of the time. No? It will. Okay. Now, why, why does that happen? You have one that charges all the time and one that doesn't. Yeah. You have a 2800 watt and a 2000 watt. One of them becomes the master and one becomes a slave. The master sits back and goes, you know what? You got this. You're good. You just keep on going. I'm going to sit back here, and if you need me, I'll come on. That's how the inverters work. So one's always charging, the other one go into a full charge and just kind of be sitting there doing nothing. Ooh. That's how they're programmed to work. Because okay. one inverter, one charger can charge all eight batteries and can keep up. The other one is there for the inverting side. Okay. 
Okay, we don't need both of them to charge all eight batteries. It's just there for inverting. Okay, so yeah, that is normal to see one full and the other one be on absorb or float. That's normal. Okay? So do we understand how this works? It's automatic. You have a manual switch to override it. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Multiplex lighting. It's easy, guys. Sounds confusing. A multiplex. Sounds, okay. There's the deal. <laughs> Sounds confusing, but it's really not that confusing. Okay? Here's how it actually works. So, this is the fuse panel you have, right? We're going we're gonna to talk about this. This is what you guys have now. Everybody has a fuse panel. It looks similar to that. In the bathroom. In the in storeroom. The bathroom. Yep. Yeah. In the bathroom. Yeah. Okay? This is the new one. This is for the 2017s. Notice it doesn't have any fuses on it anymore. It's all breakers. Cool. A little bit easier to work with. It's all resettable breakers. All right? So with the fuses here, there's a series of lights on here. Every fuse has a light next to it. There's a network light right down here. That when it's on, it comes up. Now, let's talk about those lights. It's almost Christmas time. What color are the lights? Green. Green. What happens if they go out? Red, I guess. There's one right there. There's no fuse there. It's red, which means the fuse is blown or it's not there. Okay? So these lights are kind of self-diagnosing. If you come in here and this light here is not green and that corresponds to the circuit you're trying to turn on, then we know that, hey, that fuse is blown or that circuit's bad. Right? Pretty simple. Okay? So we're going to monitor these lights here. Same thing on the 2017s. They have the lights over here that all correspond with every circuit. All right? You turn on a light. You hit the light switch, and what you're looking for is, does that circuit, so the fuse panel label, you're going to look for that. Let's, we turn on the entry ceiling lights, and they don't work. When we go back to the fuse panel, we find entry ceiling lights. Oh, that's circuit 12. So we look over here at circuit 12 right there. Does it have a green light on it, or does it have a red light? Is the fuse blown? If the fuse is blown, that's going to have a red light there. Okay? Fairly simple. But really, what is that system? What is that multiplex system? It seems complex. Everybody thinks, oh, you know, I can't touch it. I can't do anything with it. Not so. Okay? I'll explain it to you so that everybody understands really what it is. Just imagine that we all have a computer. That each one of us right now, we're on a computer. We're all connected to the same router, and we're all connected to the same server. We're all sharing information on the same server. Okay? That's what this is. This right here is the server. It stores all the power and distributes the power when we request it. Okay? All the wiring in the coach and the little connection blocks that we put in, there's some different connectors inside. The, there's one under the bed. There's one in the passenger side overhead. Just di different connection points. That's the router. That's what communicates everything together. The switch panels are the actual computers. All the logic is built into that switch panel. So if you think about it in that mindset of it's no more than a computer network, that's really all it is. Okay, so a switch panel quits working. Doesn't light up. One of the lights don't work on it. What am I going to do with it? How am I going to test it? Okay, you're going to check here. Every switch panel in your coach is removable pop the plastic bezel off. It's got four screws that hold it in. You can take that switch panel out of the wall and it just unplugs. I've got some in there on my desk. I'll bring them in here in a little bit. It simply unplugs. We're going to unplug the switch panel, take it to the fuse panel. See this little guy right here? It says net port. Yeah. I've always wondered what that right there. was. Yeah. Okay, I can take a switch panel out of the wall and I can plug it directly into this fuse panel. By doing that, I've just opened up the testing process. Because you're going to call me and say, this switch panel doesn't work. I'm going to say, take it out of the wall and plug it in and let's try it there. So you're going to stand right here at the fuse panel and you're going to select the different buttons on the switch panel. You're going to be watching this to see, hey, does anything click and do those lights come on? Because every time I touch a button on that switch panel, 
the corresponding channel or circuit should come on. The light should come on. If it doesn't, we know, hey, I have a bad switch panel. It's not that difficult, is it? dollars and you're good to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I mean. A couple hundred bucks and, hey, you're back on the road. All right? Good retirement, but, I hope. But you can plug directly into that. Okay, now they do that on the 17s as well. They can they can plug in exactly the same. Huh. All right, that's your switch panel. Here's your four screws right here. When you take it out, there's a plug on the back side. You simply unplug it from the wire that's in the wall and take it right to the fuse panel. Okay. okay. If we determine it's bad, and you say, okay, it didn't work, it didn't light anything up, you need a new switch. This is what we have to have. This sticker right here, you have to tell us all of those numbers. So you would read us that whole label, and here's what we can do. We can get you the new switch. Usually within a day or two, you can have a new switch. We have to have this so we can pre-program that switch to your coach. Yeah. Okay, because what did we say about the switch panels? They are the computers. All the logic is built into the switch panel. I can't believe that. That just a little push button is. Oh, jeez. All yep. the logic is built into that. Is panel there any right way there. to <clears throat> turn on those lights if the switch panel isn't working? If From another switch panel. Absolutely. Right. And you have a master, so there's there's kind of there's not one light that's only on one switch panel. Okay. It'll be on the second switch panel somewhere in that room, or you can operate it with the master. master. And okay. there's a master on the front. Right. The master behind the seat. And a master in the bedroom. Yeah. So you've got three master three. switches that you can make it work. Okay. Okay. Now does it matter if this come out of the wall right behind the passenger seat? Does it matter if I take this back to the bedroom and plug it in? Will it still work? Yeah. Absolutely. Because the logic is built into this. Regardless of where I take it, it will do the same function. 